Well, hey, I'm joined by head coach Travis Mercado. He's the head coach of the women's wrestling team at Colorado Mesa University. The Mavericks were just named number one in the RMAC preseason poll. But Travis, thanks for joining me today, man. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me on, Zach. Well, Travis, just to kind of kick things off, uh, I want you to take a moment and just preview this uh, Colorado Mesa program for us. Yeah, definitely. Um, This is our sixth season of our women's wrestling program here at Colorado Mesa. So we've come off to a really great start over this program, right, of where we've been at. Um, We just came off a fourth place finish at the National Collegiate Women's Wrestling Championship. That's our third time finishing fourth, our fourth time finishing in the top five. Um, Last year, we had seven All-Americans, and we crowned our first national champion, Marissa Gallegos, who's now our assistant coach. Um, you know, returning this year are, you know, returning all Americans are Genesis Martinez at 101 pounds, um, Isabella Morales um, at 101 pounds, Haley Chapman at 130 pounds, um, Holly Bodwin at 136 pounds, um, Dahlia Garibe, two time national finalist for us, is returning for us at 155 pounds to start the season. Um, and then we have two um, returning all Americans, or one returning all American, Jaylene Sakona at 191 pounds, and Isabel Shellac, who has wrestled on the UWW Beach World Series this year and has finished uh, seventh in the world um, in her beach wrestling career so far. Um, she's returning at 191 pounds as well. I mean, that's a lot of that's a lot of talent coming back right there for you. So just from that alone, I'm excited to see what you all do this year. But um, kind of jumping into my next question here and not to bury the lead with all this, but coach, you've this is certainly like the first time that I've seen a sport added to a conference while I've been in, in this position. Um, but I know that you've been a trailblazer in moving women's wrestling into an NCAA sponsored sport. So I want to know, uh, I want to know from you, what does it mean to you to be able to be a part of this progress and then to see it put into action? Definitely, man, it's, it's been a journey. So I started coaching women's collegiate wrestling, um, 10 years ago in 2013. Um, and at the time there were maybe 30 programs total NAI, NCAA, N- NJCAA. Um, and now here we are in 2023 and there's over almost a hundred NCAA programs, one, two, and three, right? Um, division one has four, division two has um, somewhere near 30, 35, division three has somewhere around 35, 40. Um, it's amazing to see how much we've grown and to be a part of that process, to see the young ladies that have, were in college 10 years ago, making Olympic teams, winning Olympic medals, Um, And that's really where women's wrestling started as, right? It was an opportunity for our U.S. national team to provide more opportunities for these young ladies to compete in freestyle, get more matches, and not just show up at the U.S. Open and have one or two freestyle matches under their belt before going to the world championships. So seeing the growth um, has been fantastic. Last year was the first time that we held a national championship in an arena um not at a host school and that was amazing right it was so fun to be in the same arena that men's d2 was going to be in the next weekend to have all of the graphics that were similar to the ncaa graphics right with the in uh, the national collegiate women's wrestling championship logos and things but you can tell they try to really make it like the national championship and it was kind of a surreal moment for me as a coach, knowing that myself and, you know, all the other coaches that have been really pushing for this movement and trying to get the NCAA emerging sports status down and um, to us to kind of be in that arena for the first time and to crown national champions under one stage spotlight, the walkout, the tunnels, all of that was amazing. And um, to hear the news from the NCAA um, women's committee just recently that we were like on track to be a championship sport as early as um, I believe it was 26, 27 um, is exciting for us. And, you know, again, the RMAC adding women's wrestling as a, as a sponsored sport, like it just goes to show like women's wrestling, I think is the next growing sport um, collegiately. And a lot of schools should just start to look at it and, you know, see where it can take them. Absolutely. And maybe just going a little bit further, um, last year at the championships, uh, being able to wrestle in a state with such a pedigree of wrestling. Talk about that and maybe what your student athletes were feeling while they were there. You know, re- talk about their excitement, talk about your excitement, talk about, you know, the feeling heading into it. You know, that was something that we really hammered on um, the two weeks prior to the national championship. And, you know, part of the philosophy here isn't really about the outcomes of winning and losing. Like, that's part of the process. 
um, really what we focused on going into that tournament was fun and, you know, kind of embracing that moment, right? There's not very many opportunities in your life where you get to be at the pinnacle of your sport. And um, for me, it was like, hey, I want to take as many pictures with the team and the girls just to kind of, you know, commemorate that moment. Um, but really, we just took it in like these girls were the first ones to have a and I say a true national championship, and that's not fair to say for the previous three years, you know, the schools that hosted did an amazing job of providing an environment, but it was just different, right? Being in that arena, having all the fans there. And again, you're in Iowa, right? That is wrestling hotbed, right? So mm -hmm. people were coming out. And I think what's going to be really exciting about this year's national tournament, you know, University of Iowa, first power five school, right? They're 30 minutes up they're down the road from Cedar Rapids, Iowa. So you're going to get a, a, I think a bigger draw in the fanfare and everything this year. And it's going to just make the event even more exciting. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. I know the girls are as well. And then you just said something that really kind of sparked another question kind of leading off of that. Have, have your, uh, has anyone on your women's team, you know, talked to you about, or have you talked to anyone on the team about how, they are pioneers. You know, we we spoke a little bit earlier about how you've been a trailblazer to add women's wrestling to uh, NCAA sponsorship, but they're the competitors in there. They're they're also the ones that are in there doing this, not only for themselves, not only for their institutions, but for the next wave. And to me, I think that would be that would just be an incredible feeling. So has that come up at all? Has anyone have you talked to them about that? Yeah, that's really come up, especially at like summer camps this year, right? We host a really big camp and we have probably almost 200 girls that come out for the 10 days of camps that we have. And, you know, you get some of these youth, five, 10 year old girl, five to 10 year old girls, um, and they start to recognize the girls on our team. Well, that's Genesis Martinez. She's from New Mexico. I'm from New Mexico. Oh, that's Dahlia Garibay. That's Marissa Gaye, right? And I think that's the thing that, you know, the girls are starting to like realize is that they're they're just as recognizable as some of these big division one men's wrestlers, right? The Bo Nichols, the Zane Rutherfords, the Kyle Snyders, right? They're just as recognizable and they're starting to kind of feel that and see that. And I think that gives them a little bit of extra motivation to perform at a high level, not only for themselves, not only for their families and for their schools, but for for them, right? For these younger girls that know that they're going to have an opportunity to compete at an NCAA institution someday and win an NCAA championship. Absolutely. Well, kind of leading into my next question here, um, you've got a really promising roster with a solid mix of young talent, but also some veteran presence as well. What kind of confidence does that combo give you heading into this season? Right. I think the, the mix of old and young is fantastic within our program, right? We you know, on paper because of COVID, right? We don't have any technically seniors, right? We have Genesis Martinez who started her grad school and this is her fourth year of competition for us. Dahlia Garibay is finishing up her undergraduate degree this year. And she's, if you would, a senior, right? She still has eligibility, but you have some veterans within our program that have kind of seen the whole process, right? Gone through the national championships at the smaller Adrian High College, Tiffin, right? Have gone through a COVID year, right? So they know kind of how things go. Um, and they just have that experience of performing at high levels and winning when it's important and having the young girls come in and to be able to, again, we talk about role models to see how they take care of being a student, right? taking care of their social life, taking care of their academics, taking care of their nutrition, all of that, they can see that and replicate that, right? And I think a great example right now is having Marissa Gallegos as our assistant coach, right? Four-time All-American, first national champ, right? 3.98 GPA graduate. Like she did everything that we as coaches expect of our student athletes. So it's a great role model in a coaching role there. Um, and the young girls, I, I'm, I'm most excited because they want to wrestle and compete. Like they are so excited for this weekend to finally put on a CMU singlet. Um, we were talking the other day after practice that, you know, one more, one more day, if you will, of beating each other up. And then in a week we get to beat up other people, right? We get to bring the fight to somebody else. Um, and that's exciting, right? When you have a group of young ladies that are eager to compete and want to compete for us and understand what our vision of our program is and the goals that we've set for ourselves and 
right? We, we finished no less than top five the past four years. Like we want to get over that hump of being fourth and get into the top three. Um, I really think that we can do it with this program and the group that we have, right? We have some amazing freshmen, um, Adriana Gomez from Arizona, Kylie Tobaldo uh, um, from California. She was the number one ranked girl in her weight class coming in as a high school senior. Um, Valerie Glenn, California state runner up. Um, you know, we, we, Maggie Smith from Wyoming, right. You know, we have all these young ladies in our program that are super excited to wrestle, want to be here and are challenging our older girls as well. So it's just good balance of competition in the room. People are being pushed and challenged. And I'm, I'm really excited for, you know, next Friday when we get our first chance to, like I said, to put our hands on somebody else and not beat each other up for, for a change. Well, coach, it's like you're reading my mind with these questions here. My next question was actually going to be on Marissa Gallegos and and her ability to be a role model as an assistant coach with this program. Um, perfect record last season. You mentioned it, four-time All-American, national title last year, first one in program history. Talk about the process of bringing her onto the coaching staff following her co collegiate career. Um, and then talk a little bit more in depth about what that means to some of these uh, competitors this year, maybe some of the, the veterans who are kind of stepping into her role that she had last year, and some of the uh, lower classmen that are that are kind of going to be expected to meet this standard that she's set. Definitely right. Um, keeping Marissa at home, right? I'm going to say it like that, right? Keeping Marissa at home was a, a big priority for me um, in the sense of bringing in a, a coach that I knew valued the same things that we did in our program, understood the university and how it worked. Um, loves living here in Grand Junction, right? She doesn't want to move back to Denver where she's from. Um, she likes being here. She had a lot of different opportunities as soon as college was over, right? She could have gone to Oregon to wrestle at a an RTC. Uh, another RTC in Arizona was, you know, calling her to see if she wanted to move there, right? The, the world-class athlete program with the U.S. Army was interested, right? So she had a lot of opportunities. And after talking with myself and her, her family doing some, you know, personal reflection. She felt like this was going to be the best place for her to stay, um, not only to coach, but also to train for the 2024 Olympic trial process, right? And and further on, right? So not only is she coaching and helping and teaching and mentoring, but now she's also still training. So now the girls still get to see that, right? Like, what does it take to compete at a high level, right? So you're talking about being a role model and emulating, right? So these girls get to see how she's training and what she's doing and how she does things the right way so that she can compete at a high level. And I think it just kind of, like you said, sets a standard of like, Hey, this is what the expectation is. Like, if you want to meet this, like, these are all the steps that you have to take. Now it doesn't guarantee those things, right? Marissa was a four-time all American third, second, third, so close every single time. Right. And, you know, she did everything right. And that's why, you know, in our program, when we don't really, we don't put the emphasis on winning and losing, we put the emphasis on performing at a high level, wanting to win, wanting to be better than the person across from you on the mat and even being better than the person that you were today and yesterday. Um, so having her here has been fantastic. She's done an amazing job. You can see the girls going to her for technique, social, academic, right? How do I register for classes? Like she's done it all, right? She's been a student athlete um, here and she knows the process here. So having her here was, is a great thing for us. Um, I'm super excited to continue to work with Marissa in, in the capacity as a coach, getting her ready for Olympic trials in 2024. Um, I'm even more excited that I get to continue to work with Marissa as a coach uh, in a different level in a coaching capacity, because those last year, she kind of was like a, a surrogate assistant coach in the sense of like, We'd sit down and talk about lineups. We'd sit down and talk about matchups and watch film together and kind of formulate game plans, not just for us, but for other people as well. So now to have her being active in that role has been fantastic for us. And from my perspective, that's so huge as a competitor to like, if you can teach something, you can do it hundred percent, you know, like the more, the better you're able to teach uh, a technique, um, a mentality, just, just like from a broader perspective, even like the easier it is for you to participate in that. So to me, that's really cool. I, I didn't realize that she was going to be uh, competing in trials. So um, looking forward to hearing about that and uh, yeah. cheering her on uh, the entire way. But um, moving into my next question, not only were you tab number one in the RMAC preseason rankings, but you were also named the number four program in the NWCA preseason poll. What sort of standard does that have for your Mavs heading into this season? Um. 
you know, I think it's it's where we left off, right? We finished fourth in the nation last year. It's right where we left off. Um, so it's kind of like a stepping stone, right? We know where we want to be. And we were talking about it just briefly after practice, just kind of like, hey, by the way, the rankings came out. You know, this is where we're at, but that doesn't mean anything. What really matters is the final number in March, right? And I think it just gives us confidence, right? One of our young ladies, Erica Schroeder, two-time national qualifier for us. She's been in the round of 12 each year, right? Just miss qual- uh, being an All-American. Um, after practice, I kind of called her over. was like, hey, come here, come check this out real fast. And I showed her the rankings. And she was so excited because she's always felt like, man, I've been so close. I've been so close. And like, we both started talking about, she's like, it doesn't matter though. And I was like, what matters is that it's, it's this metaphorical piggy bank, right? It's you're putting money in this metaphorical piggy bank. And that's where your confidence comes from, right? We just keep putting stuff in this piggy bank and it just allows us to compete freely, right? We know that we're doing the right things. The things that we're planning and doing have given us an opportunity to compete at a high level Um, for like the younger girls and even like the recruiting group coming in, right? Like, you know, they see that and that gets them excited that they get to be a part of a program that's, you know, leading the way, not only, like you said, pioneers kind of leading in the RMAC, leading in the nation is kind of pushing women's wrestling, but also leading in the sense that like, we're one of the best teams, like we compete at a high level, we travel where we need to compete and see the teams that we are. Um, And I think that makes that exciting, right? For us, we get to excited that we get to continue the path that we've been on and continue to do the things that we've been doing. Definitely. Well, um, talking about the team as a whole, uh, your assistant coach, Marissa Gallegos, um, and you've kind of uh, alluded to it at the beginning of this interview, but I want to give you an opportunity to talk about and maybe shed some light on some of these returning All-Americans and even some of these uh, freshmen, sophomores who are stepping in who you expect to have a big impact this year. Yeah, definitely. Um, You know, let's, let's start with our returning All-Americans, right? You, first one that comes to mind is Genesis Martinez at 101 pounds. She's been a staple for us for four years, right? She took a red shirt year um, a couple years ago for us, and she has no, finished no less than fourth at the national tournament. And every year, you know, somehow we find a way to beat the number one girl in the nation um, and the national tournament. Last year, I remember she beat the number one girl in the Constellation semis and kind of put it to her. It wasn't like a close match at all. Um, okay. And this year, she did something different. She got on the sand with Isabel Shellac. They didn't actually wrestle each other because they're different weight classes, but um, Genesis took to the sand this year, made the UWW, um, US, excuse me, the USA Beach World Team. And she just traveled to Turkey this past two weeks ago um, to compete at the Beach World Championships, right? So she's kind of done some different training and I think it allowed her to kind of open up some of her offense and kind of see things in a different light. Um, so I'm really excited to see how that training this summer will translate over to the mat, right? I'm really excited to, for her. Um, also returning at 101 pounds is Isabella Morales. Um, and I'm what's so fun about Bella is that her confidence just continues to grow every time she steps on the mat, right? When you're training with another fellow All-American and then you have other people around you, that are really high level, like she just continues to get better. So I I truly feel like we could see a Colorado Mesa, Colorado Mesa national championship finals match at 101 pounds this year. And I think that's how like deep we are at that weight class. Um, Returning this year as well, Haley Chapman, right? Freshman last year at 130 pounds, all American, right? I know she was a little upset with how she finished last year, finishing six, which is nothing to be ashamed of. Um, The girl that took third, um, she Haley had beaten three times. I mean, that's just how it goes, right? That's how the national tournament goes. Sometimes you don't find each other in a bracket and matchups happen certain ways. Um, but she spent the summer training. She came, she was kind of in and out of um, Grand Junction when she helped out with camp. She went to the training center a couple of times. So she had a great summer of training and, you know, where she's at right now, I'm really confident that she's going to do a repeat performance at the national championship and finish higher. Um, senior Holly Bodwin at 136 pounds, right? Again, another staple in our program the past four years, two-time All-American for us, um, coming back to compete in her senior year. Um, all right, Haley, or excuse me, Holly is going to be fantastic, right? She's very dangerous in the sense that if she gets on top, she's going to score a lot of points and she's going to pin you. And I think that's something that's been um, a staple for us is that I can go into a match in a dual meet knowing that Holly's probably going to score big team points for us, right? You know, women's wrestling a little bit different than men's wrestling, men's wrestling. Um, you have a decision, major, a tech fall, a pin, where women's wrestling, it's decision, tech fall, pin, right? So 
you know, we don't get a couple extra bonus points here and there. It's you only get the two tech faller pins. So I know Haley's or excuse me, Holly is always going to be looking for a pin for our team. Um, and I can kind of always count on that when I kind of do some, you know, in match math to see where we're at team points wise. Um, you know, we'll talk about Erica Schroeder. I just mentioned her, right? Two-time national qualifier for us, round of 12, ranked seventh in the nation, currently at 143 pounds. Um, she gets better every year, right? And I think it's just a continued confidence, right? She was a, a late start, really, in the sense of she started high school, I think it was her sophomore year, maybe junior year of high school, right? So this is what's so great about women's wrestling. Like, you can come in and if you put your mind in any sport, right? You put your mind to what you want. You want to accomplish what you want and you challenge yourself daily you step out of your comfort zone like you can be really great and I think that's something that Erica has shown um she's really strong in her faith with God and I think that's really helped lead her to the position that she's in right now um I'll come back to Dahlia because she's a two-time national finalist but you know we have Jaylene Sakona, right um two years ago she was the talk of the national tournament unranked unseated comes in beats the three seed beats the four seed beats the six seed, beats the two seed, right? And then we find our way to the third place match. Um, you know, she's great. And she's the biggest teddy bear of them all, right? Like there's a picture from the national championship last year where she has her hand on um, one of the girls like knees. They just finished wrestling. And it looked like, if you look at the picture, like, oh, Jaylene lost. Just like the look on her face, the expression. And the other girl has a very similar expression, but that's just how Jaylene is. She wears her heart on her sleeve. She's so fantastic. She cares so much about her teammates. Um, and her competitors and she enjoys those like tough competitive matches where it's back and forth she loves that she looks for that she searches for that um, to have her come back this year to kind of lead the team is great and then you have Isabel Shellac, right she's come off a, an injury that kind of prevented her from wrestling a lot the past couple of years she's been doing a lot of beach wrestling she's been ranked in the top eight in the world the past two years so to kind of have her coming in returning as an all-american at 191 it's kind of like we have these bookends right we have 101 we have two returning all-americans 191 Jaylene's a two-time Bo's a one-time all-american like we have this nice little bookend and then we just kind of sprinkle in in the middle um talk about freshmen now right incoming class right mentioned a handful of them right Adriana Gomez from out of Arizona she's a firecracker of a wrestler right She's not afraid to go big when she needs to, and she's not afraid to let it fly. And I think that's what's the most fun about watching her wrestle right now um, is she just lets it fly. And it's so fun. She's, she's dynamic. She moves, she has heavy hands. Um, so that's been fantastic in the sense of like, again, adding to our lower weights. Now we have Genesis, Bella, Dre, right? Three top competitors, just constantly beating each other up. And again, next week we finally get to beat somebody else up. Um, Kylie Tobaldo, right? Number one girl at 112 pounds coming out of high school, um, four-time California state placer, national, or excuse me, high school state champion out of California, uh, two-time runner-up at the national, the junior national tournament in Fargo, North Dakota. Um, she's been great. She's fantastic, right? She's, she's, she's slick. Like she's a, a kind of like a Dahlia Garibay in the sense that she's slick. Um, returning national qualifier, Hanaya. Uh, Halverson at 123 pounds, right? A freshman for us kind of sat behind Marissa last year, if you will, in the depth chart. Um, but again, now, again, now we have Marissa still here. Hanaya is right there at 123 pounds, excellent training partner to get within every day. Again, go back all, all around. You have a returning all American and Haley at 130. And then you have Marissa as a training partner. And then you have Kylie Tobaldo right below you. So again, some great training environments for Hanaya. Um, you know, a couple in other incoming freshmen, right? Valerie Glenn, California State runner-up at 136 pounds. Um, you know, Maggie Smith out of Wyoming, couple-time All-American as well at 170 or 191 pounds, most likely 191. Um, you know, we have a couple other national qualifiers returning. Selena Cook, she did a great job at 143. She's moving up to 155. Um I forgot about Dahlia, two-time returning national finalist, right? So Dahlia Garibay, a uh, senior for us, two-time national finalist, returning. Um, it's funny, right? Dahlia in high school was like third, second, second, and then her last year she won a state title. Um, and it was funny, the year that she won a state title is when California moved this girls' state tournament to the same venue as the boys and ran it all along beside each other. So we're kind of hoping some history repeats itself where yeah. we're one year, we're one extra year moving into the big arena. Right. But um, moving into the big arena, I think that's where Dahlia flourishes. She loves the limelight and, you know, to have her 
kind of wrapping up her year. I think we're we're on the hunt for that. She was preseason ranked number one. Um, hearing that yesterday kind of brought a little smile to her face, but then she kind of looked at me as we were getting ready to practice. Like, there's work to be done, right? And that's the mentality that she has. She knows that there's work to be done. That number is just a number and it doesn't mean anything until, you know, Saturday night in March. 100%. Um, I'm looking forward to all of this. I mean, the every name you drop, I'm like, dang, okay. <laughs> trying to keep up here and and I don't know how you're doing it because that sounds like a, a a process in and of itself just to keep track of all this talent so um that's fantastic coach last question here and you spoke a little bit earlier about feeding this metaphorical piggy bank throughout the year you know adding to it building on it um so let's fast forward to the end of this season um what would be the marks of a successful season for you you know it for us, success isn't measured in winning and losing, right? I, I It took me a long time as a competitor to figure that out. Um, I was a, a young athlete that, you know, just wanted to win. And when I lost, like, it was like, the not necessarily the end of the world. I wasn't a poor loser, but I didn't like losing. Um, but as I got older, I realized, like, it doesn't matter, right? I could wrestle really poorly and win, and I can wrestle really great and lose. Like, the, what really matters is how I feel about performing. So that's something that we've really focused on. And, right, I think success is going to be defined differently for each person in our program. Um, the outcome isn't the end goal, right? It's part of what we get to accomplish and the opportunity to do that. Um, but if we had to like put benchmarks on like, what does our season look like? Right. I think it's, you know, winning the RMAC as a start, right. I, I look in the banner of Bronson arena and I see all of these great teams that have been here at Colorado Mesa before us. Right. I look at baseball specifically, right. There's, I don't know how many RMAC championships. I kind of lost count one day. I was thinking there's 20 something. Right. I was like, I want to have a banner that looks like baseball. I got a lot of catching up to do. Um, but I want to have a banner like baseball, like softball, like basketball like men's wrestling right I want to have that banner and I think that's just a an extrinsic thing for us right but it's it's good to have that representation and to see that and then to have that representation and visualization on campus here as well um you know this is an Olympic year right so there's some some extra events sprinkled in right I, I really want to see us qualify more girls for Olympic team trials than we did in 2021 we had one girl Marissa um, you know, I'm looking forward to having four or five girls qualify for Olympic trials this year. That's something that's kind of like a, a highlight benchmark for us. And again, if we don't, it's not the end of the world, but it just shows us where we have to improve and get better. Um, you know, national duels, right? I think that's always a fun event for us in the sense of like it's team versus team, big things, right? You're going to have some amazing teams there. North Central will be there. King, McKendry, University of Iowa, us, right? you know, five of the top best teams in the nation will be there competing for a, a national dual title. And I think we have a team that can really compete. Um, you know, the two times that we've gone, we finished no less than fourth. We've lost in the semis both times. Like, how do we get past that? Right. But again, I think going to national duels and competing as a team is a fun thing for us. And again, the benchmark is like, are we enjoying our company? Are we enjoying wrestling? Are we having fun? Not necessarily. Did we win? Um, you know, the uh, the inaugural RMAC championship tournament, like I'm, I'm really excited about that. That's going to be a lot of fun, right? Get to crown individual RMAC champions um, throughout the throughout the conference, right? I think that's going to be a really fun event to kind of be that inaugural one. One of our girls was like, how cool would that be that I get to be, right? Again, going back to being a pioneer, how cool is it that I, I'm, I get the opportunity to be the first RMAC champion? And like, that's what we're excited about, the opportunities of those types of things. Um, you know, I... Uh, I would expect us to win the region again, right? Simon Fraser's tough. I, I, everyone doesn't give them enough credit. If somehow Coach Abdu always finds these Canadian national team girls. And I'm like, where'd this, everyone's like, where'd this girl come from? I'm like, well, that girl was a two, 2021 Pan Am champ. This girl was a 2022 Pan Am champ. She took silver at Pan Am. She went to the world championships. Um, I don't think people give them enough credit sometimes. And I know that they're going to be fierce competition. So we get to see them. Um, in December at Desert Duel is kind of a benchmark to see where both of our teams are against each other in our MAC duel. Um, but I, I fully expect us to, if you will, defend our title of regional champions again. Um, I'd like to qualify all 15 for the national tournament. That, that's kind of like my, my big goal, right? We've qualified 12, I think, the past two years, just a couple short of the, the goal of all 15. Um, I'd really like to qualify all 15 competitors to the national tournament this year. And then when we get to the national tournament, 
that piggy bank's full. It's busting out at the seams. We're going to have to break it open and cash out and just use all of our fun, fun money, if you will, to go play our, to go do our favorite thing. And that's wrestle. Well, coach, I mean, as I've said before, I'm excited to see what you all do. I'm excited to see what this league does. I think there's plenty of talent all the way around in all five schools. So uh, looking certainly looking forward to that RMAC championship, that inaugural inaugural one like you are. Um, I'll be there. Um, I'll be super excited just like you. Um, but yeah, thanks again for joining me. Uh, I appreciate your time today and good luck this season. Thanks, Zach. And I uh, appreciate you guys. Appreciate the RMAC for sponsoring women's wrestling. I'm really excited about this inaugural year. It's going to be an amazing thing to see this and hopefully more conferences can see what we're doing and, you know, you know, try to catch us because, you know, like Yarmex says, everything's elevated. Everything's elevated. You heard it here first. Thanks, coach. Go Mass.